Welcome you all to the second episode of Curiosity, the science program, summing up the developments in 18th week of 2020. The first story of the week is the link between COVID-19 infections and blood clots in the lungs. A study published in the British Journal of Hematology by the Irish term assessed 83 Caucasian COVID-19 patients and found microclots in the lungs as a leading cause of deaths among COVID-19 patients. Perhaps you have heard of fibrin, an insoluble rough mesh-like protein which is a major component of the blood clot. When these fibrin molecules get degraded, it gives rise to something called D-dimers. The D-dimer got its name from its chemical structure, two D fragments interlinked via a crosslink. Earlier this year, the D-dimers have been found in the blood of many of the COVID-19 patients as well as those people who have died from the COVID-19 infections. Presence of D-dimer in the blood is a strong indicator of some form of blood clot that thrombosis somewhere happens in the body. In COVID-19 patients, a four-fold increase in D-dimer in the blood is a strong predictor of mortality. The second story is from economics. You might have heard a term called universal basic income where the government pays out a fixed sum to all its citizens. Well, you might think that it's a crazy idea. It might lead to inflation as well as, uh, you know, general uh, laziness among all the citizens, but it doesn't, friends. Universal basic income is based on strong economic principle and has been endorsed by a number of Nobel Prize winners, including our own Amartya Sen and Abhijit Banerjee. The latest study is from Finland, the Scandinavian country that tops almost every list of human development index or happiness indices. Finland ran Europe's first basic income trials in 2017 and 18 and the government paid regular income of Euro 560 to 2000 randomly selected unemployed people across the country. The condition is that if they get a job, they don't have to repay you know, the income back to the government. The latest study conducted by the researchers from University of Helsinki assessed the recipients of basic income scheme and concluded that the recipients were more satisfied with their lives and experienced less mental stress. The study has great relevance in these days. You see the post-COVID-19 days where unemployment is on the rise everywhere in the world. Perhaps it's the right time for the government to consider providing universal basic income to unemployed citizens for reducing income disparity as well as poverty. This will also help to increase the overall well-being of the country. Third story is also about mental well-being. A new systematic review published in the journal Critical Reviews in Food Science and Nutrition by a US team assessed mental well-being of the people who avoid meat and the people who eat meat and they found that the meat eaters tend to have better psychological health does that mean vegetarians like me should start eating meat to ensure mental well-being not exactly the following conclusion is from the paper our study does not support meat avoidance as a strategy to benefit psychological health. Remember that the study was conducted in the US where more and more people turns to veganism for a variety of reasons, including to fix something already wrong like diet as a cover for eating disorders or environmental sustainability and animal welfare. In contrast, the Indian vegetarians are motivated more by purity and contamination and endorse pro-in-group or hierarchy values. Also beware of statistical confounding. Correlation does not mean causation. People who convert to vegetarianism might have certain inherent psychological tendencies that might be responsible. Nevertheless, this study stirred up hornet's nest with lots of curiosity-driven questions for follow-up research. The fourth story of the week is from social sciences. Latest study published in the Journal of Human Resources by an American economist asked the cardinal question, how harshly should the society punish young lawbreakers? The study assessed re-offending tendencies of two groups of young adults. Group 1 sent to rehabilitative youth facilities that tend to be milder while the group 2 sent to harsher youth prisons. The study concluded that group 2 that is the young adults who were sent to harsher punishment were 27 percentage more likely to recidivate that means go back to the bad behavior and commit more violent offenses than the group 1 within a span of 8 years. Authors also conclude 
keeping young offenders separate from their older peers in the prison seem to be effective. By the way friends, super popular course called Justice by Harvard University is open and it's completely free during this lockdown period. I have enrolled myself, you can do it too. By the way, there are so many courses that offer you free certification as well. For details, please have a look at my video. The link is given in the description section below. The fifth story of the week is also about young men. A study published in the journal Social and Personal Relationships by a US team revealed an interesting pattern. The presence of girlfriend diminishes young men's tendency to take risks. The study included 134 young men in relationships and were subjected to risk-taking games alone and in presence of their partners. Authors conclude that dampening effect on risk-taking attributable to the romantic partner's presence and not merely due to the knowledge of being in a relationship. The study found that when the men play the games in presence of the romantic partners, they tend to be risk averse. Perhaps another word for sending our children to co-ed schools. The sixth story is about herpes, one of the common skin diseases. Herpes is transmitted by herpes simplex virus that belongs to the same family of chickenpox virus. The oral herpes is transmitted by herpes simplex virus 1 or HSV1 that causes lesions in mouth as well as lips while herpes simplex 2 virus causes genital herpes. But mind that not all herpes is sexually transmitted disease. New study published in the journal Science Advances by a US term found that infections by HSV1 lead to amyloid plaques and other physiological changes in the brain very similar to that are found in Alzheimer's disease. But mind that the study did not conclude that Alzheimer's disease is caused by dormant herpes simplex virus in the human brain. HSV1 might be responsible for Alzheimer's disease. Let's wait and watch. Mosquitoes. Well, guess what? Our seventh story is also about mosquitoes and yet another infectious disease, malaria. Well, you might know that malaria is transmitted by a protist called Plasmodium falciparum, transmitted through anophilus mosquitoes. Did you know that only female mosquitoes bite human beings? Male mosquitoes suck nectar from flowers instead. New curiosity-driven serendipitous study published last week in Nature Communications by a team from Kenya and UK found that a microbe that lives in gut and genitals of mosquitoes completely prevented the transmission of plasmodium. It's a big discovery with 100% blockage of malarial parasite. But the catch is that only 5% of anophilus mosquitoes in the wild has this symbiotic microbe. This microbe named Microsporidia MB is very closely related to fungi. For using this fungi as a biocontrol, that is the control by a living organism, we need at least 40% of the Anopheles mosquitoes in the region infected with Microsporidia. One potential strategy is to deliberately infect the male mosquitoes. Remember, male mosquitoes don't bite us and release them to the wild to infect the female. When these male mosquitoes have sex with the female mosquitoes, bingo, our microsporidia get sexually transmitted into the females. Eventually, a mosquito sexually transmitted disease might prove itself as a silver bullet in our fight against malaria. How about dengue fever? Yes, we have yet another microbe to help for dengue virus as well, a bacterium named Volbachia. Volbachia has been found to make the mosquitoes harder to transmit dengue virus. Eighth story of the week is from physics. Well, you might have noticed a general trend in this channel to feature videos that conveys how to reduce the carbon footprint. That is how to make small lifestyle changes towards environmental sustainability. Of course, I bike to work and reduce my carbon footprint as much as possible. But still I travel at times, you know, both domestic as well as international. I've been to 23 countries so far that shows how big a polluter I have been. A remorse inducer, you see. Environmental cost of air travel is very high and it's of course well known. To fly or not to fly, that is the question. 
A new study published in the journal AIP Advances by a team from Wuhan University, yes, the same Wuhan, the coronavirus Wuhan, designed a working model of fossil fuel free jet propulsion. Designed a working model of fossil fuel free jet propulsion. The newly developed prototype worked with something called air plasma ejection to achieve the propulsion. As you know, plasma is the fourth state of the matter consisting of charged ions. Plasma is produced naturally on the surface of the sun or during the lightning strikes. What Wuhan researchers did is that they ionized the air first using a microwave and they ejected this ionized air in extremely high pressure through a fine nozzle to create a plasma jet to achieve an enormous thrust. A very exciting news for environmentally conscious air travelers indeed. Ninth story of the week is also from physics. The study published last week in the journal Nature by a team from University of Tokyo, Japan describes an innovative way to convert heat energy to electricity using Fe3Ga that is 75% iron and 25% gallium that they created by doping. They achieved this by boosting a phenomenon called ANE or anomalous Nernst effect. Nernst effect named after Walter Nernst, the German chemist, is the flow of electrons through the conductor when a conductor is exposed to thermal gradient in the presence of the magnetic field. A related phenomenon is Pelcher effect. Of course, there is no such thing as free lunch or free energy. You need to have a thermal gradient that is extremely hot and extremely cold and, and of course a conductor and magnetism for this to work. An immediate application for this technology would be small gadgets like remote controller or wearable devices like watch, you know, the smart watch or activity trackers. The 10th story of the week is about lions, the iconic animal. A new study published in the journal PNAS by an international team revealed startling genetic structures in lion populations worldwide. Their sub-study about Asiatic lions in India revealed a very low genetic diversity. What does that mean? Lions in India are very similar or genetically less diverse owing to extreme high rates of inbreeding, that is, crossing between the relatives. Such a low genetic diversity is not at all good news, friends, because that is leading to very low evolutionary fitness. If something happens to just one individual of that population, for example, a devastating fungal disease that can quickly spread or sweep through the population, collapsing the whole population, low genetic diversity will have ramifications on the immunity as well as it contributes in spreading deleterious mutations as well. A potential solution is to interbreed with lions from elsewhere, for instance, African lions to bring in the diversity to our population, you see. The corresponding author of this paper, Dr. Thomas Gilbert from the University of Copenhagen, Denmark says the following. Lions in India are seen as the pride of the country and many would not want to see them polluted with non-Indian lineages as quoted by the research matters. Yes, that is a problem with our mindset. Unless we change that mindset, we might be risking the fate of our lions. The largest hole in ozone layer over Arctic finally closes, confirmed by Copernicus, the European Union's Earth Monitoring Program. The hole was spotted last year and the media speculated this is due to CFCs. But the new study confirmed that the hole is produced by polar vortex, the high altitude currents. Again, no connection with the ongoing COVID-19 lockdown. Astronomers find closest black hole to the Earth yet. 1000 light years away. How close is that? To compare, the distance between Earth and the center of galaxy is approximately 4% of that distance. Amidst COVID-19 pandemic, India cancels Arctic program. World's first sea cucumber conservation site has been recently opened up in Lakshadweeps. Three new species of horned frogs were discovered from Nagaland and Manipur by a team led by Delhi University professor Satyabhama Das Biju. Number of tigers in Sundarbans has risen from 88 to 96 according to a report by the State Forest Department. 
World Migratory Bird Day is on 9th May. Endangered Species Day is on 15th May. Bike to Work Day is also on 15th May. International Day of Light is on 16th May. Well, if you are interested in stargazing, there are several interesting things happening in this next week. Eta Aquarius meteor shower will continue till 12th May. Jupiter moon close encounter is on 12th May. Mars moon close encounter is on 14th May. In this week, we are also bidding farewell to the Orion, the conspicuous constellation. By the way, did you miss the last super moon of the year on 7th May? Then here is something for you to relish. The best pick of moon I have seen so far. Stitched with 28 images at various lunar phases to highlight the contrasting topography. The image is just like DIC or Phase Contrast Microscopy. The image is by James McCarthy Reddit. Well, you might have noticed a hidden feature of curiosity is pick of the week. Any guesses where is this picture taken from? Mars. This true color picture was taken by yet another curiosity. NASA's Mars rover. Last week's image was a stunning gift by Hubble Space Telescope on its 30th birthday. Larger nebula is called NGC 2014 while the smaller one is called NGC 2020 are from star forming region deep inside our galaxy the Milky Way approximately 1,63,000 light years away. This peak has a nickname Cosmic Reef because it resembles a scene from undersea. By the way, I have a NASA applet running inside an app called IFTTD that is if this then that that automatically update my phone wallpaper with NASA's astronomy picture of the day. A very handy app to automate the task that works with simple conditional statements like if I'm at home, turn on the coffee machine. Highly recommended. SERP National Postdoctoral Fellowship Scheme is open now. Last date is 13th May. EMBO India Bioscience Grand Writing Workshop last date is 26th May. Indo-Sweden bilateral scheme call on artificial intelligence for healthcare is open now. Deadline is 28th August. Also don't miss a webinar by Professor Ashutosh Sharma, the DST Secretary on 12th May in INSA India's webinar series. Please look the description section of this video for the details. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get updated when the next episode of the curiosity is released. Hope this video has been useful to you. If you like this video, please click thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and share it in relevant groups. See you next week of Reader CN.